fixing the money thing. Well, thanks for joining us here on Fixing the Money Thing. And the Bible talks about debt in this manner. Proverbs chapter 22, 7 says that the borrower is a slave to the lender and the rich rule over the poor. A slave brings all kinds of pictures to mind and that is basically no options and no life. And quite frankly, that's how many Americans live. Our couple we have with us today, Steve and Mindy Higgins, found themselves in great debt, despairing of life, family pressure, well, let's let them tell their story right now. Steve and Mindy, great to have you guys with us today. Oh, great to have you. And so we're going to talk about your life, talk about what happened back in 2008. <clears throat> now, you were a very successful builder here in Columbus, and you had what, what going on? Yeah, we, do, we were building homes. I was a builder. Uh, Mindy was a realtor, and so it was a pretty good combination, and the business was growing uh, very quickly. And, uh, you know, we, we had done everything we thought we were supposed to do. We were saved, but we were living in the natural. We were living for ourselves, trying to build more and more wealth, providing for the kids, uh, helping others, but really just got just caught up in ourselves, really. And, uh, you know, nobody really saw it coming. And out of the blue, both the things here in Ohio that t tended to be pretty good, uh, both crashed at the exact same time. And, and that's so the, the building market. The building market, the real estate market, real estate and market. even our retirement that we had put in mutual funds and things of that nature, which seemed like a very conservative, well-planned strategy, all crashed at the exact so same time. So you had, time. what, almost a half million dollar save? That's correct. And you're on top of the world, you're, you're, uh, you're expanding every year, you're building more buildings, real estate's going well. Yep. And then all of a sudden, without warning, the music Poof. stops. The music, yeah. the music stopped. Okay. <laughs> exactly. So, Minnie, tell me what happened from your perspective. How did it impact you? How did what was going on in your mind all this time? Well, everything did end, and and it was it was hopeless. We were on pins and needles. Steve was trying to be the 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 supporter, provider, the sure. provider for our house, and and he was not able to do that anymore. And here I had a real estate job, which was flexible so I could be with the kids and, and work around their schedule. And that was no longer going to be an option. So I had to go out and get another job, which it made offense to me in, in my heart because I wanted him to be the provider so I could be the mom with my kids. Sure. Well, I think a lot of people probably found themselves in that situation. But basically, both of you lost your, your income. You lost your savings. And did you lose your house? Did you lose possessions? Did you go bankrupt? What, where were you at that point? Right. Didn't, didn't lose the house. Uh, it was a very difficult task to close the business, uh, laying off 88 employees, hundreds of subcontractors, impacting these families that had really given their lives to our business, shared in our vision, and were really applying themselves, and we were doing great things. So that, that was very difficult in and of itself. Sure. But needless to say, they weren't really, there wasn't a good market for my skill set or my profession at that point. 70% uh, yeah. so of my peers were going through the same thing, going bankrupt, losing their businesses. And so, you know, it was difficult, even with the college degree, even with my background, to find a job here in the marketplace. Right. Um, at, at first, it seemed as though we've seen this before, we're gonna be okay. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll just weather through this. Uh, but very quickly, we realized it wasn't going to be okay. It wasn't gonna be as things have happened in the past. And so while our marriage seemed happy when we had plenty of money, hmm. it's funny how when the money issues start, the cracks start to show up. And well, let's talk about sure. that. Let's talk about your marriage now. So your family life, pressure's on. So Mindy, what's happening inside your marriage right now? Well, when Steve would come home for work, it, everybody would go to their corners. <laughs> we, it, he would come in and he'd be so upset about how things were going and we'd be so upset about how things were going that we didn't even want to talk and it was, it put such a barrier and such a weight on each of us that it, we were cracking and there were plenty of times that he put a for sale sign out in front of our yard just on a threat because we need to get rid of this house. Everything was a, a all or nothing and it was going to the nothing and we were, he was, he was ready to come in and get rid of everything. And of course, we didn't want that. This was the house we've lived in for 10 years. You know, we've raised our, our kids. Were, our youngest son was like born in this house. So mm -hmm. it's, we didn't want to get rid of this, this house and, and everything that we had. And we wanted to provide everything for our kids. And 
it just nothing was was coming together and he would come home and he'd be in a bad mood and he'd yell about the lights being on and we're getting rid of all the TVs and all the Xboxes and and you kids aren't doing this and so I, he was always yelling because he was so stressed out and so then I had to jump in the middle oh, this is how I felt I would jump in the middle and I'd be the, the in-between and, and the one who was the barrier so the kids didn't get, get yelled at I would be the one to say um, uh, no, it was me, or, and it, it just caused a lot of friction between us, and, and the kids started to become afraid, and it, it was just, it was not a good thing Not at all. a good thing. And, and, How long did this, now you were Christians, yeah. But you Going were to church. <laughs> still needing something on the inside, and how long were you angry, Steve, till you finally realized that you needed help, or how did you find a crack through that? What, what happened? Sure, well, you, you, we talked about the business closing. I had to find a job. You know, a lot of times people just sit around and they don't do anything, but we didn't have an option. We weren't going to, you know, go backwards. So I just started looking for jobs and I took what I could find. Sure. Uh, I wasn't waiting around for upper management position. I said, you know, we've got, a, we've got bills to pay. And so I found myself with a college degree uh, and after going through sequences, hundreds of resumes out, every contact that I had available to try to find something for me. And I found myself in a retail mall for $7.40 an hour in a cell phone store. Oh, and wow. uh, so when you put in 60 hours retail in that type of environment, it starts playing with your mind and you start getting very frustrated. I did get to move from that into a banking job, which paid more. In fact, what many people would consider well, you know, very well paid. The problem was it was still a third of what we needed to pay our bills every month. So we continued to sink and sink. I was struggling trying to keep up with some of the younger guys that maybe had better skill sets with computers and challenged with that. And so the stress each day, I would come home like she described. I was just both hands kind of barely on the wheel just trying to survive. And I intercepted an email one time from her that said, uh, that for, to a friend that said, here he is again, bursting through the door, veins popping out of his head. I just want to run and hide. And you know, that, that's hurtful when that's your wife, you know, and the whole reason you're getting up in the morning is to go to these jobs right. that you don't really like, but to provide that that's their perception of me. So, yeah. you know, like we said, we were saved, but you know, I, I've, I, I referred to it as I had my fire insurance policy since I was in the third grade. I was saved. I went to a Christian school, grew up in a Christian home, but it was a, a very much a religious experience. Not necessarily because my pastors didn't do something right, but because I didn't do something right. I didn't apply the word of God. I didn't have ears to hear in this process. And so I wasn't leading a godly run household. I was running a religious household. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, so basically, we uh, once we got to the end, the marriage. You know, she didn't want to be with me any longer, which I understand based on the circumstances we described. Um, I was at such the end of my rope. I really didn't feel much like I wanted to be with her any longer either, and it was it was all but over as far as our marriage was concerned. Um, you know, we actually would wake up in the morning wishing that we were dead, believing that if we were dead, it would be better for the other person. Well, I don't know that we were really concerned about the other person, but we were concerned about the kids at that point. Well, we did actually have an argument once about who it was that was going to kill themselves. And it was just so <laughs> bizarre that I'm like, no, you need to stay because the kids need you. No, they need you because you're their mom. I mean, it was, it's bizarre. Yeah. It's, and so really, while we say there was really no love, there was obviously love there, we were just or else so depressed. we wouldn't have been it concerned was... about that. So, yeah. But that's where we found ourselves, and so you know, we we had gone to marriage counseling, um, and the first marriage counselor was a, a secular counselor that really didn't have quite the right direction for us. Uh, uh, he actually suggested drinking, that maybe <laughs> yes. drinking might help. <laughs> and we thought, okay, this isn't the right person. So we we sought a, a marriage counselor that uh, that had. Uh, a little bit more of our background in terms of our religious beliefs and spiritual beliefs at that point. And so she met with us for a while and she basically could really quickly identify this was a debt related issue and this was our circumstances we were in. And she said, if you weren't, if you didn't love each other, one of you would have already been gone. She said, you can keep coming here if you want. And she goes, I love taking the $150 an hour. She says, but what you really need is to get plugged into a local church. So we thought, well, that's interesting. Okay. And so, and Steve, yeah. I have you hold that just yeah. for a second. Sure. I want to hear the story, and I'm, I'm sure you do too, how this all plays out. When we come back in just a moment, we're going to hear more from Steve and Mindy about how the kingdom of God changed their lives completely. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing and thanks for watching.